Hello, my name is Michael Samler. I'm making a two-part video on how to flat using Clip Studio Paint, formerly known as Manga Studio. Uh, it's now no, just known as Clip Studio Paint. It's a Japanese software that's been imported to America. Uh, it's a bit troublesome to learn to use because a lot of the terminology is translated from Japanese. Not necessarily translated well, but probably good enough. Uh, I've been pretty lucky to watch enough videos and to figure out what's going on here. Uh, to get good at this program, and I love it. I don't use Photoshop to draw anymore. I do all my drawing and flatting here, and then I go back to Photoshop to actually color. Uh, I could probably color here. Uh, I've started to, but I don't feel as comfortable. I'm just not good at, enough at it yet. But flatting here in Clip Studio Paint, for me personally, I can do it much faster than I can in Photoshop. Uh, if you're familiar with Photoshop flatting, a lot of times you use a uh, lasso tool. To select an area, color it, um, select another area, color it. That's great. In this, uh, in Clip Studio Paint, because the bucket tool works differently and because of an additional uh, paint tool that will blend colors together uh, equally, they don't blend together. Uh, they'll blend them till they meet uh, with no aliasing, with no anti aliasing in it. So everything's aliased, which is what you need for flatting. Uh, it makes this a uh, unique flatting experience that I find much faster. Uh, this first video, I'm going to talk about tools and how I have Clip Studio Paint set up. And then in the second video, I will just talk about flatting with the tools we had set up for it. If you're really good at Clip Studio Paint, you just didn't know how to flat, you could probably start at that video because I'll reiterate um, the settings in those tools in the second video. If you're new to Clip Studio Paint or you want to pick up some different tips and tricks, because there are a few things that took me a while to learn that I think are really useful, hang out, watch this video. Uh, I'll try to keep it about 20 minutes or so. So, and, or watch it, at, you know, YouTube, double the speed and watch it faster and get through it. But there are a few things that you might, uh, will likely pick up. Uh, this is a page from my comic called Heliopause that I did, um, story and all the art i uh, had some help with some special effects and uh, my wife did the lettering but everything else here is stuff that i've done uh the reason i'm doing this video is i'm an admin in a a facebook group called comics art and relationship and a lot of people are asking about clip studio paint and how to use it uh it goes on sale for 25 dollars about twice a year at least and there's two versions. Um, I think the, the expensive version is EX for expert maybe. And I have that version, but it doesn't matter which version you have for flatting. The only difference is the more expensive version for $85 when it's on sale includes animation and a different um, a storyboard. So you can see all of your pages for your comic at once, which is super useful. I'm sorry, I probably could have even opened that up, but um, I'll show that in the next video. One thing to keep in mind, if you haven't purchased Clip Studio Paint, if you buy the $25 version and later plan on buying the $85 version, which is what I did, there's no discount for already owning the original version. You're not paying an extra amount to get it. You're paying the $85 no matter what, when it's on sale. So keep that in mind. This is a great um, group, supportive group for people making comic books. We post uh all sorts of tips and tricks here. We're a lot of support for everybody. It's open for anybody who wants to join. You just answer a question promising to read the rules before posting and we let you in. This is Clip Studio Paint Forum. This is uh, formerly Manga Studio. This is a great place. I got a lot of tips here. People were really helpful. And when I started flatting, I posted my workflow here and I got a lot of suggestions to improve what I was doing and make sure I wasn't making any mistakes. So I'll post links to all these um, sites I'm mentioning in the description below. So don't worry about that. But this has been a wonderful place. Uh, thank you, Clip Studio Paint uh, Forum. One more place, penciljack.com. A lot of people here were also asking how to flat in Clip Studio Paint. Probably a lot of people are just used to doing it in Photoshop, totally understandable. Um, but I was going to post my video here because people here have also been super useful uh, with me posting up comic book work and they give a lot of advice. And they also give a lot of recommendations. I've picked up a couple books recommended to me from people on here. They've been super useful for me uh, becoming a better comic book artist. 
we're going to use the page here from a, a book called Motor City Mo. I'll flat this in the next video, but this is a, the project I'm working on now. A comic called Motor City Mo. Uh, they just got kickstarted, which is amazing. Um, these are the guys that started it. Kyle Esper, Tyler Elkins, and Dylan Elkins. They run a company called uh, Three Wise Men. They have a podcast. They, they write comics. Uh, Ryan Taveras is doing the pencils and inks. And they all let me use this page here to use as a sample. So thanks, you guys. Uh, here's me. I'm doing the flats and colors for this book. And Shannon Esper is doing all the lettering. So I'll also put a link to, uh, to this project in the description below. And now... To start showing the tools, I'm going to use my warm-up page. Um, I just have a master file and I just put the date when I start. I do a lot of uh, warm-ups in the morning, about 30 minutes practicing anatomy. But I want to use this just to, to show a couple things about how uh, I set up my quick keys and some of my tools. Here we go. I'm using a Wacom tablet and it's got touch sensibility so it's making my window disappear if I touch it on accident here. So um, here we go. This button on my pen is I label it E. It's my quick key. Uh, it actually toggles between two different sets of tools. And I'm going to show you how that works in Clip Studio because that's something you don't get with uh, Photoshop. And then the second button, Shift Alt Control, it allows me to change the size of a brush, pen, pencil, whatever, and an eraser. So if I go here to Clip Studio Paint, uh, usually I start out penciling using a hard eraser. This is kind of getting shifty here. Um, and I also use the new vector, uh, I use a vector layer, which you see on the bottom left here. It's got the little box icon in the corner. So I'm going to be drawing on a vector layer. And the reason I do that is because um, when you're drawing here with your pencil, pen, or whatever, uh, the eraser, you can select on the right side in the tool property palette here what you want the eraser to do to the vector. So I usually have it set to erase until an intersection. Here I'm using the upper button on the pen and dragging uh, back and forth to change size. This can erase the vector to that intersection there. Uh, I find that really useful. Especially uh, when I'm sketching in the pencil here, which is pretty big right now. Oh, there we go. So um, maybe you're sketching here. Got a nice eyeball, and you're like, "Oh, I'm so I'm so lazy at drawing in all this stuff in this eyeball." You can grab the eraser here, and smaller. Just makes this super easy. Just drag through all those extra lines you want to get rid of. Uh, this is great because usually you're drawing, you know, a circle, drawing a face, drawing in some of the lines here. And then once you get things drawn in, you don't need these lines anymore and they erase to uh, those certain points. So it makes it really quick for sketching. And it works just as well for inking as, as well. Uh, I want to bring up my shortcut menu here to see show you how I'm doing that. Um, I have these two different tools with the shortcut letter E, which is what I had mapped to my pen here. And in Clip Studio Paint, when you, you can do three. I've never tried four. I assume you can. Uh, I had three things labeled E, so I could um, it would toggle between the three of them. It would go one, two, three, one, two, three. It was a way I just couldn't wrap my head around it. Uh, two is perfect to toggle between the two. Um, so I have two different places. Don't think of them as tools. Think of these as places labeled E. What that means is I have on the right side in the tool palette here, I've got these two tools here that are both with the shortcut E. And so anytime I hit that button on the pen, it toggles between the two. And each one of these icons is as many tools as I want to store. And so I can toggle between any one of those tools in, in this icon to any one of these tools in this icon here. So on the t upper left-hand side, sub tool palette, uh, I've got ink, pencil, special brushes, just random stuff I'm playing with. Um, the things I've been practicing to color with, although I haven't gotten very good at it. And this is my flatting tab. 
So this is really important for flatting because I have the same tools as you can access from the right side under the tool palette copied and put here, but they all have specific settings. And that's the key to flatting is that if I don't grab, like, for example, the bucket from the right side where I'm always changing settings, I always use a bucket from the flats panel where I have very specific settings. Now I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, let's say I have a bucket over here. You look at the sub tool. There's all these buckets. Um, I just grab one of them, duplicate it. I'm going to call it a uh, fill bucket. Or I got to turn my touch back on. Fill bucket. And now it's here. I don't want it there. I need to put it, if you look at the tool palette, I need to put it in one of these spaces. I'm going to put it in this first one that has the red icon bucket in it. So you grab it from the sub tool palette over to that icon and just drop it in there. Now that copied bucket is in there. Uh, I can toggle with my key back over to there. It creates its own tab, which is fine because I'm going to grab it from here and then put it into the flatting tab. So now that tab, extra tab is gone. In the flat tab, I have that new fill bucket that I'm going to make now. Um, I also like to go to the settings. Uh, when I'm filling, I'll add background color and change it to red. That just changes the color of the icon. And that way, um, when both my tools are set to flatting, both of them are red here. And I feel safe. I, I feel safe with my tools. If you use the wrong tool or have uh, anti-aliasing on or something, you can waste hours of work that you'll have to redo. You have to use aliased uh, work to, for flats. And so you do not want to make that mistake starting out because you will just waste your time. So now I have that new tool fill bucket. I labeled it red. I'm going to go over here to settings. Uh, follow adjacent pixel on, close gap, doesn't matter. Uh, while I'm flatting, I often change it depending on what I'm flatting. Uh, sometimes hair has a lot of gaps in it and you can increase the, the size of the gap that the color will not go past. Or if you're doing something with a lot of cross hatching, you can turn it off and that way the paint fills into the cross hatching easier. Color margin off. Area scaling off, multi referring on, and you're going to set that to reference layer. This is really important, and I'll show you how to set up the layers for flatting in the next video. But this is this is really important step here in the tool. The non reference layer. This is layers that will ignore. You don't have to worry about it. Stop filling. Don't worry about it. Reference drawn. We don't need it. Opacity 100%, blending normal, anti-aliasing off. This is the most important, anti-aliasing off, super important. That tool is set. You can click this gear icon in the little uh, preview window of the tool property palette. And that way it just kind of, it won't, if you accidentally click something and you change and you come back, it's, it resets it to where it was, just in case you, you may accidentally do something. Um, that's one tool that's really important, uh, and I keep that here on this left icon. In the right icon, the second tool you use for flatting is the fill in mono pen. I'm not sure where it started out. It's in one of these other icons, and I have a ton here now from all the different stuff. In one of these original icons that comes uh, with vanilla Clip Studio before you make changes, there's a fill in mono pen, and it makes flatting a lot easier. Brush size changes all the time. I use specify by size on screen. I think that's way easier. Uh, what that means is uh, my brush is, let's say three. It's gonna be smaller. Let's go uh, 1.5. And I need to fill this face with a color. Um, but my brush is a little big. Instead of changing the brush size, I'll zoom in, but my brush is still that same uh, size on screen. So the more detail I zoom in without ever changing my brush, it's just faster for me. But that's up to you. Try it out. Opacity 100%. Blending mode normal. Anti-aliasing. This last button, which is 
none. Stabilization doesn't matter. Uh, I keep it low because I'm usually just filling little gaps, so it doesn't matter. And then these other things are grayed out. They don't matter as well. So those are the two tools that you want in some kind of sub-tool tab with the um, same shortcut so that when you hit one button, you can toggle between the two of them. I'm going to erase this bucket because I don't need an extra one in there. And that's how all these tools got in here. Uh, my ink, All these ink pens I used, they were all somewhere else. I copied them, put them in here, changed the settings to what I want, so the settings are always ready to go for me. Um, I love the G-Pen. It's G-Pen 2, so I changed a lot of settings there. I added some, uh, I don't know whether this is some shake in there to make it look like my paper is textured, but just little things like that. Um, so that's what you absolutely need for flatting. But a couple more things about Clip Studio before I end this video. Uh, if you notice up here, I have, this is called the command bar. Uh, in the command bar, you can set up to whatever you want. I use the command bar a lot. Even though I have a uh, touch and you can make gestures and stuff, I still think seeing these icons is a lot easier. Um, the first thing I did with this is uh, you can add an icon that show or hide the title bar and menu bar. So uh, these are the menus up here. I don't need them. And then above that is the title bar. I don't need that either. Uh, so I put this toggle button on here to make those disappear. You can still access the menus from here, which I think is a lot faster because you don't have to move as far to, to get through the menus. Uh, when it's up here, it's just a lot longer and I don't know, it's, it's a personal preference, so whatever you want to do. Uh, but what's nice about this little four boxes here, when you put that on your command bar, if you have a touch tablet, and let's say I use my finger to open that, it optimizes those menus for touch, so it's a lot bigger icons, and I can go to file, I just go file, recent or whatever you can go back with this button here you can you can exit i think that's really neat it's a lot more useful especially it's on the i'm uh, right-handed so i'm drawing with my right hand and i use my left hand to toggle those menus and that's where that is um this one here i usually have crop marks when setting up panels so i i can put my panels in the right place that show hide title bar um sub view palette that's something we're going to use while flatting it makes it a lot faster, but that toggles it on and off. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. Uh, I have a page that I've already colored. I'm going to grab colors from there while flatting to make it faster so I don't have to go over to the color wheel and select new colors. I can just grab from there when I'm started, and that's just faster for me. I also uh, have touch, so I can I can scroll, I can zoom, I can scroll with, uh, with the touch in that side. Uh, but you can also do that with your pen or your mouse here. And um, I have it automatically switched to this color picker here, but you can turn that off and it switch. And when you ever you come into that palette, it'll give you the space bar hand there, but I'll keep it there for now. You can see the uh, color wheel changing as I drag it around, really useful. Uh, you can add as much as you want. I actually have two images in there. This is one I just flatted. So when I flat the next page, I want the hair color and skin color to be similar uh, while I'm flatting, just to keep some consistency. And this little import button there, and then get rid of stuff as you don't need it. You can also scroll zoom here. So if you don't have touch, you can actually get around pretty easy in there. Let's uh, put that away with this icon. Uh, selection launcher is something I never used because I didn't understand it. But now that I do, uh, you can have that come on when you select something. It brings up this palette down here. But if you don't want that palette, you can toggle it on and off. And this is also you can set this palette to be this little table here, whatever icons you want in there. Uh, command bar setting icon you want in there because you'll fidget with it until you get everything you want on there. And that is, uh, everything else is just preference. But I think you'll probably use those a lot. Um, and it just took me a while to figure out how to use it, so it's nice to know, have someone let you know how to do that. Uh, I think that's all the little tips I have for Clip Studio right now. So I'm going to end the video here. And then in the next video, uh, I will get set up and start showing you how to get the layer set up properly for flatting and then my workflow, workflow for flatting. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.